In this video, I want to look at one of the more challenging aspects of calculating uncertainties in experimental data, and that is uncertainties in graphs. So we'll be looking at how you can judge the reliability of your data from your graph, which is the more straightforward part, but then calculating the uncertainty in a gradient and y-intercept that you may have used for further calculations is the bit that, find that is often found to be a bit more tricky. So let's start off with the easy bit, which is looking at the reliability of data. Here you are looking at the scatter of your plots about your line of best fit and judging the reliability based on that. It's quite simple. If you have a small scatter, then you've got reliable data. But if there is some scatter about the line of best fit, then you've got unreliable data. Now, how do you judge the scatter? I would say as a rule of thumb, so this is not a hard and fast rule, but a good guide would be you want five plots within five millimetres of your line best fit. So that's what you're looking for. If you've got that, for a, this is for a standard six plots of data. If you have six plots of data and five of them within five mils of the line, you've got small scatter. And if you haven't got that, if you've got more scatter than that, they're further away from the line than that, then you've got unreliable data. So this graph here, here are our plots there's a line of best fit, we'd say that's got a small scatter, so it's reliable. And if they were more spread out than that, then we'd say that's got some scatter, that's not reliable data. So that's the first thing you can do with your graph to comment on the reliability. Next up is the, the really challenging bit, which is lines of worst fit. Now I'll say from the outset, you won't you may not have to draw a line of worst fit. It's unlikely you will for an exam. Usually a line of worst fit would be given to you. However, if it's not, then this is how you would go about drawing it. So I'm going to give an idea of what a line of worst fit is. Um, one of the reasons that this is more challenging, for, particularly for physics students, is that there is not a definite right answer here. There are a few possibilities for any given set of data. So that's the thing that's pretty tricky. Uh, th this first example, or the first examples rather, will be for lines that pass through the origin. So I've got a set of data here, and my line of best fit passes through the line of origin. So therefore, my lines of worst fit should also pass through the origin. So if you've got data that that's applicable to, make sure your lines of worst fit go through the origin. What I'm looking for here is something that is linked to the data and follows a sub-trend in the plots. So if I look at this data, I can see that these three plots here are lining up. I'm just going to fade out the line and the rest, so maybe that's a bit clearer. These three here, they're lining up. and They're actually lining up with the origin as well. So that's a sub-trend. The trend of the plots is represented by the line of best fit. The line of best fit represents the whole data set. But a line of worst fit is going to look for what would be close to the line of best fit, but uh, show the, like, the very limit of acceptability. And we are, are linking it to the data by looking for a sub-trend of plots. So this is a trend made up of just three plots. That's why it's a sub-trend. It's not based on all six of them. So I could draw a line of worst fit through those three points there, and that would be an acceptable line of worst fit. Bit of a, seems a bit of an oxymoron on that, but that's a line of worst fit which uh, uh, would be acceptable. That's not the only possibility. As I said, you sometimes have a few possibilities, or almost always. And if I fade out that and focus on these three plots here, you can see that they are also lining up. So we could use those to draw another line of worst fit. You only have to draw one line of worst fit for a given set of data. So you would use this one or this one, not both of them at the same time. So here's another line of worst fit that I could use, which is following the subtrend of those top three points there. So that's how you would draw a line of worst fit following the subtrend for data where the line of best fit goes through the origin. 
So we had two possibilities there. And my next example, where we have data not passing through the origin, I'm going to do the same thing with just two lines. Here's another set of data, and the line of best fit does not pass through the origin. So my lines of worst fit should not pass through the origin either, necessarily, anyway. So as I look at this data, I can see that these three points here are forming a line. So I could follow those for my line of worst fit. That's following the subtrend of those three plots. So I fade out the line of best fit, and you can see that they are lining up quite nicely. So I'm going to draw a line of worst fit there, and that would be fine as a line of worst fit. When you don't have the origin to pass through, it's really important that you make sure your line of worst fit is not radically different to the line of best fit, especially if you don't have a huge scatter of data. And probably, if under an exam condition, you're not going to be given a set of data with huge scatter. So you want something that is fairly close to the line of best fit. You can see this one is. So that would be one possibility. Another possibility would be to look at these four plots here, they're lining up, we've got a bit of a subtrend that's a bit more horizontal or less steep. So we could follow that, and this would give us more uncertainty in the graph because the gradient will be quite different, but not radically different. So I could follow that to give me this line of worst fit, and that would be equally valid. So those are some options for lines of worst fit. I hope that kind of clarifies what the line of worst fit is about a little bit. Uh, if not, you can always put a comment down below the video. So, as I said, you may not actually have to draw a line of worst fit. It may be given to you. So the next stage is, um, whether you've had to draw it or not, how do you calculate, how do you quantify the uncertainty? So let's have a look at how you do that for the gradient and y-intercept. You may have to do it for the gradient, or you may have to do it for the gradient and the y-intercept. Depends on the particular question. But the procedure is exactly the same. You calculate the percentage difference between the gradient for your best fit and worst fit lines. So, uh, percentage difference calculation is very straightforward. Let's say my, the, the gradient of my best fit line was 0 0.46, and for the worst fit it was 0 0.41. Percentage difference calculation, to give me the percentage uncertainty for the gradient, would be the gradient of the worst fit minus the best fit, and take the modulus of that, divide it by the gradient of the best fit, multiply by 100. So we're taking the modulus here, so it doesn't matter which way around you do the worst and best fit, but you must divide by the uh, gradient of the best fit. So that's how you do the calculation. Um, we're only interested in magnitude, as I said, gives us 11%. So the percentage of uncertainty for this data would be 11%. If you're doing the y-intercept, it's exactly the same procedure. You're just using y-intercept values. The uncertainty in the y-intercept is worst minus best, modulus of that, divided by the best, multiplied by 100. And that's how you quantify uncertainty in graphs. Hopefully that makes things a little more straightforward anyway. If not, as I said, put a question in the comments and I'll try and get back to you about that.